Hi there everyone, this is Mr. Bourne, your math teacher from Minnesota, and I will show you how to use the Algebra Solver on the TI-84+. I keep this video quick and to the point. What you will learn, how to use the solver to solve algebra equations, yes. Next you'll learn the limitations of the solver because there are a few. And the third point here, I'm going to be covering how to use the solver on the TI-84+, the older ones that are not color, that have, that have been around for a few years. A lot of people still use them. The solver is a little bit different on the older calculators. I will show you what to do. Okay, as always, this video is supported by a PDF. You can go to andyborn.com math. You can find a two-page PDF document that will have all the examples I'm about to show you so you don't have to worry about taking notes and looking at this video like 10 times. All right, well, let's get to it, huh? Example one, solving a multi-step equation. Now, a multi-step equation is that requires multiple steps to solve here. We've got x in two spots. You want to solve for x, right? And as you can see, you got to do the distributive property. You got to combine like terms. You got to combine more like terms. And eventually, yay, you do get a solution for x. x is equal to negative 1. Now, if you're thinking that the calculator is going to show you all these little steps, I'm sorry it won't. You just put in the top line here, you put in the left side of the equals, the right side of the equals, hit the solve, and bam, you'll get negative 1. All right, well, let's see how that works on the calculator. Okay, so here is the TI-84 Plus Color Edition. This is the keypad only, and here's what the screen looks like. Now, the, the stuff here on the top, this junk, you don't have to worry about that. That's not important. To access the solver, it's kind of hidden. Uh, you'll find it by pressing the math key, and then you've got your submenus, math, num, complex, and so on. It's at the very bottom here, kind of hidden. It's past number nine, and here we go. It's, whoops, going back. There we go. It's at the very bottom, B, solver. So you make sure that's selected, you hit enter, and here you've got your equation solver. Okay, so put in the equation, uh, the left side of it, um, and it goes like this. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Five parentheses. Now, how do you put in the x? Here's how you put in the x. It's the key marked with an x, comma t, comma theta, comma n. It's right next to the alpha key on your keypad. One press of that will put in an X. Now, yeah, I know it's capital X. That's all they got for this. Uh, so just kind of roll with it. And here I put in the rest of the equation, plus two parentheses, one minus X. Okay, and this is where you stop because then you have that equal sign. Use the downward uh, directional arrow key and we'll put in 14. Okay, now you hit graph. And you might have an answer here for x. That's not it, okay? What you need to do to get the answer is to put the little cursor next to the x down here and then press on the keypad the alpha key followed by the enter key. And after you do that, you'll see this nice little box here next to the x. That means that that's the solution. Yeah. Now, um, as you notice, sometimes you get um, round off error negative one point zero 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 one okay sometimes that can occur that's the limitations of the internal digital circuitry of the calculator so just kind of in your head you can round it up to uh, or round it down to negative one okay so you might be thinking at this moment you might be thinking oh my gosh my problems are solved I will breeze through my algebra course this does it all well not so fast there, there's limitations that you need to be aware of, and uh, I'm going to show you those right now. Okay, so here's one of the first of the limitations. You might have an equation that looks like this. x squared minus x minus 20 is equal to 0. This is an example of a quadratic equation, and quadratic equations, because they are to the power 2, could have as many as two answers that are both right. So how does the calculator handle this? Let's take a look. Okay, we'll bring things back. 
And then to put in um, a new equation, press the upward directional arrow key, and then you can re-edit what you've got. Okay, so it was x squared minus x minus 20 downward key and we'll change that 14 I'll hit clear to clear it all the way out 0 and okay alright so there we've got our equation in let's hit alpha enter and it kinda solves it here negative 3.99 once again um, this is round off error due to the internal circuitry of the calculator so that is negative four. Um, yeah, that was one of them. But where's the five? Okay. Well, let's let's see what we can do here. Um, the bound is two numbers: the lower bound and the upper bound. And we can tell the calculator, "Hey, I only want you to check the positive numbers because you know the other answer is five. So we can go down here. You can actually edit this. Hit the delete key a few times. Clear that out. Put in a zero. <clears throat> so now the bound that we're checking is essentially all positive numbers from zero up to gigantic number right there. So I'm going to replace the cursor back on X. I'm going to hit alpha enter and whoops, bad guess. Okay, I don't know why it didn't find the five, but it didn't. And it should have, but it didn't. And so you might be led to think that there's only one answer, when in fact there's two. So this is one of the limitations of the calculator you need to know about. Bad guess. Yeah, whatever. All right, here's two more examples. Absolute value equations. You could get a no solution here. There is no number you can put in for x where you, it would take uh, the absolute value of it and be negative 3. And also, this equation with no solutions, x equals x plus 1, I know it might look reasonable at first glance, but there's no solution to this one either. Let's see how the calculator handles this. Okay, so here we brought it back. We're going to go to second option, go to, and we're going to edit our equation here. We're going to put in that absolute value equation. Press the math key. Go to num by pressing the right arrow key, and then it's number one here. ABS means absolute value. So there, we've got some nice little straight lines on either side. Absolute value x and negative 3. Notice I pressed the little negative button here at the very bottom of the keypad. That's the negative symbol. Over here is the subtraction symbol. They look the same, but they are different. If you use the subtraction symbol here, it'll, um, it'll give you an error. Okay, let's give it a try. Alpha, enter. No sign change. In other words, there is no number. It checked them all, supposedly. All right, how about that other one? Let's here, go to, and let's put in that ridiculous equation where we said x is equal to x plus 1. Yes, 1. Okay, there we go. And, all right, let's try it. Let's see what happens. This might, this might boggle your mind. Alpha, enter. Okay, now it did produce an answer, but this is not the real answer. The real answer is that this doesn't have a solution for x, and yet the calculator found it. You've got to be aware of um, how there might be problems in the digital circuitry where it's comparing you know, it's using its little algorithmic processes in the little chip of silicon, and it's it's comparing numbers. I'm thinking what happened here is that when it was comparing x to x plus 1, it lost the accuracy somehow with this last digit, and it just kind of thought that they were the same number. Weird. All right. One final bit. Using the solver on the TI-84+, Plus. if you've got a calculator that looks like this, then this is for you. The equation solver looks a little bit different and there's one little piece of work you gotta do before you put in equations and get to solving them. So this is the first example that we had here in the video if you look back about seven minutes. 
In order to put this into the TI-84+, Plus, the kind that does not have color screens, the older kind, you got to subtract 14 from both sides. How come? So we have a zero right here. We need it to be equal to zero. It must be in terms of zero. All of this garbage here we can put in and then it'll work. So let's take a look at that. Okay, and so here we go. This is the TI-84+, Plus, the old kind that does not have a color screen. You find the solver the same way. Press the math key, and then you go down to the very last one. And there it is. Okay, let's put it in. Now, I'm going to do this uh, kind of fast. Okay, so I've almost got it in. Plus two parentheses, one minus x, and I got to subtract at 14. That's the only little piece of work that I had to do to put this in the solver. But in other regards, it's the same. So pressing alpha, enter, and we get negative one. So it works just the same way. But it's got to be in terms of zero. That's the only downer. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Go to andyborn.com slash math and you can find uh, this and many other useful videos on how to use the TI-84+. Thanks for watching, everyone.